All right, hello and welcome back to Drive Home Reviews, and we are joined today by a very special guest returning to us for the first time, I believe, since the hurricane heist, Miss Marianne. <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was a good. That was a good entrance. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh, well, you know, it's it's it, kind it, of my signature it, it thing is. to make an it, entrance, and it's harder. To, it gets harder and harder to come up with new ones. Um, yeah, so, but I still manage it, even in a car. I still make an entrance. She is that good. So, um, so we just saw a thing. <laughs> we just saw. Um, That's such a nice way of describing we just, it. We just saw a thing. Um, we did see a thing. So you know, I don't know where to start with this. I, I'm not going to say that I went to this thinking that oh, I'm going to see some kind of lost masterpiece. I mean, I know that the the first 47 meters down was actually a really thoughtful exploration of feminist theory seen through the lens of typical female roles in monster movies, but I wasn't expecting much of this one. But I was expecting a little more than... I was going to say, if you weren't expecting much, it certainly delivered not I, much. I was... Um, where do we start with this? Where do we... Um, where do we... Where do we even begin with this uh, this thing? This, um, okay. So this time, if you, this time instead of them being in a cage that you know sinks to the bottom of the ocean due to negligence, four idiots. Uh, basically, it's a Tomb Raider game. <laughs> I mean, basically, I'm gonna adjust this just a little bit. Basically, the plot is a Tomb Raider game. Only there's four Laura Crofts. <laughs> um, they're all morons. And they decide to go diving in an underground city. Yes. Yes. And there are blind great white sharks down there. They get trapped and shenanigans ensue. And I think that's where I'm going to start discussing this, this masterpiece that I've just witnessed. Um, yes, well, I have many feminist things to comment on. Okay. So. Well, the feminist radio meter, we always like to get a gauge on that. <laughs> um, it is... When, when you go see a movie like this, you are pretty much sure that most of the cast is going to end up dead. It is That's not fair. a good thing if you're going in rooting for that to happen. <laughs> Dear God, those sharks could not show up soon enough for me with these four fucking imbeciles and I, I leaned over and I whispered this to you during the films like watching the acting I'm sitting there going who the hell did they turn away for these parts <laughs> like but again to be fair given the script that they had to work with you can hardly expect much no, from them they no, weren't, no, they but weren't you, the worst I've ever seen no but you can't expect much a long you, shot. you can't expect them to actually sound like people I mean, can, when I, you have shit lines, I mean, though, it's hard. I, you, I, okay, I've I, done shows I where there were shit know. lines, and I it was just, impossible. You, you can make cat, everyday conversation sound natural. I can only imagine the casting agents watching the audition tapes. No, I'm sorry, your performance wasn't wooden and stilted enough. You can't be in this movie. Okay, but these are not things... Like, the things that were said were not things that high school girls would say I don't care what they know they're not gonna which, sound like that which one the the one who was the 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 expert on all the ancient mind shit or the one who was the diving expert who didn't know to bring a, a tow line along with them well all of them <laughs> yeah these were four brain trusts and and the lead one apparently is Sylvester Stallone's daughter which... Mm, no, the lead one was Mia. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sylvester Stallone's daughter was, was the... The was, blonde one. Was the idiot. The other blonde one. Yeah, the Yeah, well, okay. Right. Cool move. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, not the most likable group of characters. Or... No, not really. I honestly didn't care. I mean, I was, you know, gone for some of their deaths because I drank a lot of soda, but... It's like, it's like watching a hockey game. They always score when you go to the bathroom. And, you know, <laughs> That's fair. And, and you always miss, like, the coolest 
or not coolest, but the, the, the most interesting parts of the movie. You missed the part in Hurricane Heist where the they they got sucked up in the funnel. You missed yeah, that because you went to the bathroom. Yeah, I still missed that. You are you know, you, know, you, you missed the I only two like really good deaths in the film. This is so bad. We're reminiscing about Hurricane Heist during this. Oh, what was it? Within like the first 20 minutes, I was like, can we go see Hurricane Heist again? Yes. Um, here's a question I have if we're talking about cliches. Because the cliche in this one, now in the first one, uh, you know, Mandy Moore and her sister and the whole thing was sisterly bond. Wait, and all Mandy that. Moore was in the first one? Yeah, Mandy Moore was in oh, the first one. Oh, see, I haven't seen the first one. Yeah. Um, and this time the sisterly bond is two stepsisters who hate each other. Um, which begs the question, did and I always wonder this with these movies Ooh, that have se stepsisters or step siblings that just hate each other. It's like, so did the parents not wait any time before getting married? Because it always just seems like these two people are just the the step siblings are just suddenly thrust together. It's like, did so did, were the parents not dating for a certain amount of time? Was this was it just like they came home one day and said, "Oh, by the way, this is your new dad." I mean, <laughs> I mean. To be fair, they didn't exactly hate each other. They were just kind of bitchy. Yeah, I mean, the more popular one was obviously a little bit of a bitch and kind of just wanted to ditch. Shocking, her unpopular, I know. She wanted to ditch her unpopular stepsister. But uh, I don't think she hated her. I just don't think she wanted to be seen as liking her. You know how Well, it is. I wouldn't want to be seen liking any of these people either. Uh, You're so mean. Oh, I'm sorry. I I sat through their shitty movie. What have they done for me lately? I don't know. You're the one who wanted to go see this. I love how I always get the blame for these things. <laughs> I love it. This was your idea. Don't and even you, start with and me. And you agreed, or you could have said, no, let's go see something else. Don't, don't give me... I Creature features. Then don't blame me for this. That didn't qualify as a creature you feature. You agree. That did not qualify as a creature feature. There it was were, shit. There were creatures and it was a feature. So. Still doesn't count. You know, okay. Creature features are fun. This was not fun. This was stupid. This this was this not fun. This wasn't even stupid fun. This was not fun. Stupid I, fun is sharptopus. This is. Hell, stupid fun is even sharknado. I mean, this this wasn't fun. Stupid fun is two-headed shark attack. I mean. This was not stupid fun. This was just stupid. And, you know, I realize in a film like this, you're not supposed to pick apart the logistics of it. But there's just a lot of logistics that don't make a lot of sense to me in this. No, because they were trying to present it as almost like a realistic thing, and that's not going to happen. If you're going to do something like this, you have to go out there with something like Sharktopus or a two-headed shark or a giant alligator or whatever the hell else they've done. Well, but the logistics of this just don't play. I mean, there's there just so many... It's not a good sign when you're sitting there, and again... You go see this movie, you know what you're getting into. This isn't like, you know, I, I did not go to this expecting a symposium on marine biology. Well, yeah, but, but at I the hope same time, fun at the same time, when you're sitting there just picking apart the log logistics of these things, I mean. You know the way the lights are right now? It looks like we're about to get. Abducted by aliens? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean. That would certainly put a better spin on the evening. I ain't gonna lie. Um, well, it makes for probably your most interesting drive home review. That it would. Oh, gee, thanks. That is not <laughs> what I. Oh my god! <laughs> I am doing this on camera. <laughs> Fuck you. See, apparently, this is another thing I want to bring up in this movie. This movie was apparently made in the '80s when flipping off the school bully was still considered like the height of of insults. I guess so. Because, like, they flip her off and she has this look at her. Like, her delicate senses had never seen anything so horrid. Good lord, if I got offended with it. I mean, granted, I do get, like, just a tiny I'm bit just... offended anytime somebody flips me off. But honestly, it, like, disappears really fast and I just start laughing. But and I... if I got offended with every person who's ever flipped me off, like, I would. It's you know. not a question of, for me, it was not a question of her being offended by it. It was a question of her acting like she'd never seen it before. This look of. <gasps> You know, you expected the monocle to pop off. You know, oh, oh, yeah. Um, also, oh my God, I'm sorry. Like the four girls, even the kind of weird looking one, were all prettier than that girl. So, like, what does she even have to be bitchy? Because about? of course, she needed a bully in this. Because 
you know cliches if you're gonna do yes, them. Yes, but if you're gonna have a bully, stack, have like Rachel McAdams and Mean the, Girls pretty, not this whatever the fuck she was because she was not even attractive. Again, I bring up who they were turning away for this movie. <laughs> who knows? Um, you think with putting Mandy Moore in the first one, they would have at least picked somebody with a name for the second well, one. Well, I, I, I mean, let's also be fair in that the first one made money in that it was not expensive and it made back its budget. So clearly they weren't going to be able to go full out with, with a sequel. It was like So what happened in the first one? They were trapped in a cage is what you said? They were trapped in a shark cage. Yeah. And that was pretty much it. I mean, they were it was two sisters trapped in a shark cage underwater. So, you know, because of course it's where the sharks are, of course it's underwater. I mean, at least this one though, they kind of swam around and did like trapped in a cage. The yeah. entire time? Well, not the entire time. They just got out and swam around a little bit. They went sightseeing. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. that's good. You know. You know. But, um, so I, ha I have questions. I have questions. And, again, not being a marine biologist, not having degrees and things like that. Um, oh, please. All you have to do is watch Shark Week. Um, this isn't even, a lot of this isn't even about sharks. A lot. Of, so they're down in the ancient Mayan temples, and they're swimming around. Yeah. And they come into, like, the burial chamber, which still has, like, fully formed human skeletons. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, the ancient Mayans were several centuries ago, hence the term ancient Mayans. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm aware that there are, there's no oxygen down there, so things can be preserved, but would there be fully formed skeletons still under the water? Well, I don't necessarily know why not. Because I would assume that they would decay by that point. Or that little little critters that live down there would, you know... I mean, these and these things look like they were freshly killed. Okay, well, yeah, you know? that's a stretch. But, so I mean, like, skeletons don't really decay. That's why we can still find skeletons but they, that are thousands of years but old. They had, they, they're a little thing, but they wouldn't be in that good of condition. I mean, these things look like, like they just sent a swimming party down there. No, they wouldn't. You know, um, so that was the question. Well, they probably didn't have the props budget or mm. the set budget or whatever to make them look like they should um, have. That, so that's a question. That's question one. Question two, and this one kind of got answered. So the gimmick this time out is that the, the main shark uh, is, is blind because it's been down under the water hundreds of years and it's kin and it's evolved, so it's blind like the the fish deep down. Wait, the uh, second shark wasn't blind? No, it, that was about what I was saying. So it turns out there's two sharks. But I, again, I wonder how long can two great whites coexist? Well, survive down there without a sustainable food source. Because they need well, a lot of food to survive. You know, maybe that, that was weren't necessarily the mine skeletons there. So who else... Who else was going down to the secret underground city that they just now discovered? You don't know that they just now discovered it. It just means that nobody who went down there ever came back up. Great! Prequel time. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> I'm so glad to hear that that uh, that explanation. Uh, I, I, it's so rare to see a film that bounces between obnoxious irritating and just plain boring and, and yet this film seamlessly manages to, <laughs> to to do all of them that's fair it's it's amazing I, I that actually takes a, a certain amount of talent that you can you can blend those various levels of unpleasantness into one you know one feature Okay, but here's also the thing. If the girls have, like, diving experience and they know what they're talking about in the theory... The one did. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, the rest of them, there's the one who was, you know... There was the Asian one who knew what was going on, the, the black girl, her stepsister, and Stallone's daughter. The Asian one was the one who knew what was what with the diving, or at least... The black girl did, too. Somewhat. Okay, okay. Um, and then... Mia, the other white one, the yeah, knew about the stepsister. The, yeah, knew, knew about the temple. And Stallone's daughter was just kind of there. Yeah, pretty she, much. She was. Um, she was the end. The rest of this of this crowd. So, I'm 
there's just not gonna be that much screaming and that much stupidity if they know that much. Oh, oh. Because any idiot would know that if a shark is blind or anything is blind, senses automatically, other senses automatically become heightened. Now, I don't know, I'll admit, I don't know anything about shark's ability to hear. Um, but the smell is going to be heightened. So you want to make sure, and just in case, depending on their hearing, you want to shut the fuck up if you're they trying to hide from a blind shark. They actually you know you made go, that point. <laughs> I think I think you might have been in the, ba in the bathroom when... That's entirely possible. When stepsister actually said that. Oh, their, really? Their hearing is heightened. She actually made that point. Well, she was a little late with it! Yeah. Oh, Speaking of hearing, this was something that, that I noticed that was bugging me. So they're talking to each other. So they have the full-on face masks mm -hmm. to talk to each other. Their ears are exposed to the water. Yeah, not really a good idea and when it's that far down. Not like, only that, there's no, at least not only, there's no earpiece. There's nothing you hear, but they're talking to each other. The scene where the three of them are in an air pocket, Mia is swam ahead, and they're still talking and doing the whole, the radio's breaking up, the radio's breaking up. What? fucking radio well How you, can you hear the person when your ear is outside the casing underwater that i don't know i mean that mask was big enough there could have been something on there it was but nothing was covering their ears their ears were i know because i saw mia's earrings at least five times yeah i did and i sort of wondered why they weren't like floating at some you know, point it's so it's like, how, and again, this is a stupid thing to focus on, but I'm sorry if this movie is going to be so stupid, I'm going to nitpick the hell out of it. <laughs> how the fuck were they hearing each other? The magic of cinema. The, I guess, the <laughs> fucking, fucking shark magic. The, the, <laughs> I mean, Jesus, were these the same sharks that sunk the Titanic? I mean, jeez. Sharks didn't sink the Titanic. You didn't see the animated film. Viva Referencia Obscura for anybody out there who knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> Gangster sharks sunk the Titanic. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. That sounds like something to miss. You all know what I'm talking about. If you don't, you've missed out. Anyway. Well, uh, no, it just means you're old. No, no, it's no. No, this, this doesn't mean I'm old. This just means I've seen way too many really, really bizarre films. Um, anyway, um, anything else you wish to rant about as it relates to this this thing? Uh, no, you, other than just typical feminine stuff of doing really stupid things. And it's like, I'm sorry. A woman isn't going to be that stupid. I mean, yes, a high school girl might. But with what they already knew, they ought to know then better than to act like they did. Both of these... 47 meters movies um they're they're a great argument for darwinism okay because if you are so stupid to do the shit that these people are doing then you deserve to die all right um and this film boy the the in the first film the stupid meter was pretty high but they were at least taking chances with the well we'll go in a cage yes it's a cage with a <sighs> unreputable unlicensed guy, but they were at least in a cage. These folks are, we're just gonna go scuba diving down in the Lost City, yay! And, you know, and I, I will, I'm will. i with you on that because I also noticed they made sure they got the, the shot of the one girl's swimsuit yanked up her ass. Uh, they, well, yeah. They made sure they were getting that shot every, run from the shark, make sure you get the shot of the, the bathing suit crammed up the crack of her ass because you need that. <laughs> that's, because that's endearing. That's, that's, that's vital to the story right there. Um. Well, honestly, it was one of the things more worth looking at. <laughs> she said it, not me. I just want that noted. <laughs> um. Bye. Uh, so... I still look. So, uh... So, yeah, I mean... I don't know what you want from me here, folks. This is, um... So, uh... I don't think we, this is gonna be too much of a surprise, but, uh... Final grade for this one? What do you... What do you got? Ugh... How many is it out of? It's been it's, a it's like being graded. I mean, how... 
you know, A through F. Oh. Gee, I give this one a D minus. D, D minus? D minus minus. Holy crap. D minus minus. Holy crap. I mean, you're nicer than I am. I'm going full blown F, folks. Full blown F on this one. This was a. <clears throat> this, and again, I. All right, here's why I won't give it an F. It was pretty. I won't even. I don't even think it was pretty. The scenery was gorgeous. I mean, for, I mean it was set in Mexico. I, I that doesn't save it for me. The little lagoon or whatever it is with the entrance to the um, the temple. That was like a really pretty area. I'm not saying it wasn't. I'm just saying that's not enough for me to say to to pull this up from a. And the temple was actually was, fairly interesting. They could have done a little more shots with that, but I mean, overall it was fairly interesting. I mean, the, the first one at least, it, the first one was dumb, but at least it had an interesting premise and the suspense was, you know, it, it had some pretty suspenseful parts and the, the kind of twist ending, though stupid, was at least something new. So... This one, it was it was boring, and then when it got to its climax, it was like just the bad news bears. Like everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. They got pulled down into the water at least three different times. Oh yeah, that's where it comes in. I'm not giving it a full F because that was really funny. I was just tired <laughs> by that point. I was just like, it was like, okay, how many times are they gonna get jumped? How yeah. many times are they gonna get pulled back under? You know, just no, I because the, the twist was in this one because they were originally supposed to go on a glass bottom boat tour to see great whites, and they're going through the temple, blah blah blah. They come up, and there's the boat that they were supposed to be on, chumming the water. <laughs> but it was so and funny. I'm just like, what? And then, like, one of them gets pulled down, the other one grabs a fucking um, flare gun, jumps in, shoots the shark, saves her. They're swimming mm. back. The other one gets pulled down. Uh, that was a bullet that came out of that. I'm not sure it was a flare gun. No, that was a flare gun. It was a flare gun? It was a flare gun. Would a flare gun work underwater? Yeah. It would? Yeah, as long as it's got the projectile. Okay. You know? I mean, a bullet wouldn't really work that well underwater either. No, I just, I, didn't, I thought it was some sort no, of, like, it, ocean gun. No, it was, it was, that was a flare but gun. No. You know, no firearms for water. So or at all. So yeah. So this this whole thing. This was a fucking. I don't know what this was. I don't know. And then I think we were sitting there waiting for people to leave, and you were like, "Are we? Are you sitting through the credits?" Like, no, I'm not. I don't believe there's going to be an end credit sequence to set up for 47 meters down three. I don't. <gasps> But wouldn't it have been so funny if there was an end sequence, but it was like the Avengers? Just randomly? Like the, <laughs> the only thing I will say, and this, this is another reason why I gave this movie an F, is that I thought for a second there that they were going to do something that no movie or very few movies do and do the whole nobody survives thing. I thought for a second those two girls were fucked. And if they had died, I would have been like, they, they they had the balls to do that. But they didn't. No, not in a movie this bad. Somebody's no. going to survive. So. If somebody survived in Club Dread, but then they, But what they should have done, if that was the case, they should have made it. This is why I hate these kind of movies. Is it, You know who's going to survive and who is body count. Oh, yeah. You I really, had to the beginning. The question really, was... <laughs> Which one of them was going to go first? You really, if they want to survive, <laughs> if they want to surprise you, they should do like Erwin Allen used to do and have the characters that nobody felt, have all the main characters fucking die and have like the main survivor be Stallone's daughter or somebody, you know? Like, it's like, <laughs> oh, excuse me. Have some balls. That's my state. That is my end statement on this motherfucking movie. But ultimately the goal is to make money. And my guess is that when the main characters die, it doesn't make money. But it gets talked about. But it doesn't make money. But it gets talked about. But it doesn't make money. But it wouldn't get talked about. But it wouldn't make money. That's okay. what they want, is no, money. That's, that's not true. Scream. They killed Drew Barrymore off in the first five minutes. They advertised her as the star of the movie. Killed off first five minutes. They made two fucking sequels for that thing. 
It can, yeah. it can be done. It can be done. But I think that was just to get people in the door because Drew I'm, Barrymore was a bigger name than uh, Nev Campbell. I'm just saying it, it's possible. You can do it. And if you're gonna, if you're gonna pull our chains with this, and you want to try to be different and new, as they try to advertise these 47 meters movies as being, you need to pull the trigger. You got to go all the way with it. So this, so yeah, you know, folks, it's a shark movie. It's a bad shark movie. It's not even a fun bad shark movie. It's if you really want to watch it, just wait for it to come to Netflix, because dude, it is so not. If you really want to watch it, watch something else. Go see scary stories to tell in the dark. Need, I like you, that you one. You need to see more more movies if you want to see this one. You need to see. You need to get out more. <laughs> okay, that's that's my statement on that. To be fair, I had no idea this was even coming out until you told me. But also, I'm not as in touch with the movie. I just checked the app. Thing. That's all I do. <laughs> all right. So, uh, another another one bites the dust. I want to thank the beautiful. Miss Marianne for once again <laughs> gracing the co-pilot seat because uh, uh, she hasn't been here. We'll try to get her back with us uh, more often and maybe in something that's not so that. True. Uh, I think I deserve to give a review to a good movie. Don't we all? I mean, My Little Pony was good. <laughs> it, it, it was it, 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 it had what it, it delivered on its promises. Yes, it I, did. So you know, I can't, I can't fault that. It delivered, See, it delivered on its promises. It had, it had little ponies. They weren't necessarily my little ponies, but they were ponies, and they were little. So you liked it. Uh, okay. You said you did. In the in the interest of of harmony, I will I will I'll, I'll relent on this. <laughs> oh, and friendship. Because friendship. friendship and harmony and is the two most important things. It sure is. In Equestria. Let's go scuba diving. Let's go scuba diving in a hurricane and pull a heist. Honey, I am sharks. awfully, um, <laughs> oh, what's that word? I can't even think of the word. Look, let's just put it this way. If we do go scuba diving and there's a blind shark, you're the one who's dying, not me. I don't see how that works. I'm not, because I wouldn't be stupid enough to get in the water. Well, then we wouldn't be going scuba diving. I'd be the lookout. We, we wouldn't be going scuba diving, so it's a moot point. No, then I don't know where this argument started. I don't know how it got back You're around. You're the one who said, let's go scuba diving. I was diving. making a joke of trying to combine two bad movies we'd seen into one. <laughs> oh, we could wear pony mermaid tails to go scuba diving. Then we can combine the two movies into one. Yay! <laughs> If that's, a, if that's a thing you want to see, because... Okay. Well, when we shoot our film... Oh, are we going to do a drive-home review of our film whenever we shoot it? Well, only if it has a premiere. <laughs> okay. Um, so... We uh, could premiere it right here. Right here on the dashboard. It'd be a, dri be a drive-in. Exactly. Drive it'd be a drive-in movie. <laughs> um, so... Uh, we will try to get Marianne back for a for a more pleasant film. Yay! Um, but until next time, as always, drive safe, and I will see you at the movies.